Hi, my name is Eric Anzalone. Welcome to What Matters Most. And today we're coming to you from the chip factory in Pipersville, Pennsylvania. It's the home of Brad's Raw Chips. And our guest today is David Avocado Wolf. Uh, David uh, is going to be talking a little later here today. Uh, he is an eco, um, health, nutrition, and natural beauty expert with over 16 years of dedicated experience and understanding to the inner workings of the human body. And when I tell you that he is a true living master of someone who walks the talk, I'm not kidding. He is an A-lister, a road dog. We've just had 15 minutes of talk sharing road stories. Um, but he's, he's one of those people that definitely understands the road to um, to higher levels of natural beauty, uh, vibrant health, and peak performance. He uh, also talks the walk. Again, that's why he's here today uh, to talk about it. And he's a highly sought after health and personal success speaker. He's done over uh, 2,500 live 2, events. 2,500 live events whew, uh, over the past 16 years. And along with being uh, that, he's a best selling author. Uh, he's the co-founder of thebestdayever.com, which is an online health magazine. And he's the president of the Fruit Tree Planting Foundation with a mission to plant 18 billion trees. That's right. Oh, my God, on the planet. Uh, but what we're really excited to talk to David about today is he's a gourmet chocolatier. Uh, he's a passionate proponent of the healing and beautifying power of raw chocolate. Um, and by bringing uh, raw cacao products into distribution here in North America, he perpetuates the uh, or promotes the economies of indigenous cultures. That's right. Uh, yeah. Through ethical business. So, welcome, David. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right. Uh, now, I got to ask you first before we get to the chocolate. So, you're a, a raw foodie. I mean, uh, how does something like that happen? You know, do you just. The truth is stranger than fiction. Yeah. It's, it's, part of, it's part of the unique cultural milieu that I grew up in. I, I'm originally from the East Coast. My parents are medical doctors. I'm from the Jersey Shore, actually. I'm from that spot where that show is Fist from. Pump. Yeah. yeah, right there. <laughs> really? That's exactly where I'm, I was born and where I'm from. And then we moved in 1980 when I was 10 years old over to Southern California. So then I was kind of inculcated with that Southern California surfer, natural foods, energy, and that mm -hmm. all kind of came to a head and kind of turned me into a raw foodist, I guess, starting in when I was about 18 or 19 and culminating when I was about 23. And um, that's also given me the unique perspective that allowed this whole raw chocolate revolution, which is transforming the entire chocolate industry. Yeah, so how did you stumble onto the raw chocolate uh, thing? Did you read an article? Did you try some raw chocolate or? No, I mean, back then there was no such thing as raw chocolate. No one even knew what it was. I didn't even know what ch where chocolate well, came from. Then where'd you get the idea? So, yeah, so what happened was I was in Maui at a friend's place and there was cacao beans were showing up there. I didn't know what they were. I, I just asked my friends, what do we do with these? And they said, oh, peel them and throw them into a smoothie. Because we would make these huge coconut smoothies after this intense yoga that we would go to. Yeah. And, um, and then the f first year, maybe like 10 of them. Then second year, it was like hundreds of them floating around, these cacao beans. I didn't know what the heck they were. So, so my friend and I were having a conversation while peeling them one day. And he said, have you ever just eaten one? And I said, no, I never have. So I just ate one right there. And it was like the cacao god appeared, yeah. right? It was like this whole download occurred of this whole thing of chocolate. We, this is the most widely eaten nut in the world. Sure. Except nobody eats it. What, is it bitter? It's, it's, it's all processed. Um, it's, it's, well, no. I mean, it's bitter, yes, but it's, it's doable. Yeah. And it's one of those things where you eat it, you go, oh, whoa, that's like, that's flavor. And then that began to innovate a whole raw cacao bean industry, raw <laughs> nibs, which are cacao bean pieces, really just driving us back to the original food where it all came from, because we all had processed chocolate, but never the real raw material. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's, kind, it's kind of like this. Imagine you never had a real almond before. All you had was almond butter, almond oil, but you never had a real almond before. That's what it's like. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, now I'm going to have to But here in Pennsylvania or in Jersey, we can't just go out and buy cacao beans, can you? You can. Now you can. Oh, yeah. you can? It's because of the work I've been doing for the past 10 oh. years. Okay, now it's, then, so, so then tell me, what, what are the components of raw, I mean, what, like raw chocolate, how does it go from the cacao bean into something that we would recognize as chocolate? Okay, yeah. Um, well, first and foremost, the cacao bean is chocolate. You cannot have chocolate without cacao. Okay. They're intertwined. Yeah. So really what a chocolate bar is, is a nut butter made out of cacao. Okay. Okay, now I say cacao bean, but it's really a nut. It's botanically a nut, like a walnut or an almond or mm -hmm. cashew or something. Um, if you were to press that in a press and squeeze the oil out, that would be cocoa butter or cacao butter. If that's done at a low temperature, like low temperature processed virgin olive oil, for example, then that would be raw cacao butter. And then the fine milled material that's left over at the bottom, you know, the cake that gets then milled down, that material is then um, raw cacao powder. Now, if you take those two and put them together, you're going to actually have what we s notice and recognize and taste as chocolate. That's raw chocolate. Wow. And then when you see something like a Hershey bar or, or one of those kind of processed, can does it, is it like blasphemous to you now uh, that you've you know, been eating raw chocolate? Or do you well, still well, occasionally have a little bite of a Hershey bar? And go, Ooh, that's it's like Mad Dog 2020 or Night Train or something. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's like you know, the people who are into wine, yeah. they like wine. They're not going to go out and drink M Mad Dog or they're not going to go out and drink Night Train. Uh -huh. um, so it's kind of like that. I look at that kind of junk food chocolate. It's like that stuff's like fortified wine you don't yeah. even touch that right so talk a little bit about the uh cultural history of chocolate or it's uh, it, it's had um, ancient medicinal uses and oh the, yeah. the history of chocolate is incredible i wrote a book on chocolate called naked chocolate okay and in that book i researched the entire history of chocolate and everything that we know about it today and basically chocolate comes from the new world it comes from the jungles of central america and mm. northern south america Amazonian shamans actually had chocolate thousands of years ago. Um, same is true in Costa Rica and Nicaragua and Guatemala and those countries even today. They're, they're still growing there. What was it? Was it? Uh, I don't want to say that chocolate is a junk food because obviously now we're getting into a whole area where it's not. But did they? Was it like a treat to them, or did they? Or was it more like a food of the gods? It was or, food of the gods. Right. It, was, it was their most sacred food. Okay. Um, cacao beans were were exchanged in marriages. Um, they used to baptize newborn babies long before Columbus in chocolate water. It, it's holy and sacred to indigenous peoples of of the New World. And gradually, what happened was when Cortez came over, and he was the first European after Columbus to realize like, whoa, these people love these cacao beans. They thought they were almonds. They thought they were crazy about almonds. Um, that's what Columbus said. But Cortez was the first one to really probably bring it out of Mexico and out of Central America and bring it back to Europe. It's not known for sure, but it's suspected yeah. in 1528, he brought it back to Europe. And that began the, the growth of chocolate in the old world. Huh. And then how did it go from like this brown gold, this treasure from the new world to get such a bad rap. I mean, you know, now it's like, it's, it's, it's obviously not the chocolate or the cacao, it's everything else in it, right? Right. right. Because, because like my daughter, who's 14, she, she loves chocolate, but she's worried about eating it because she's gonna get zits or something. I mean, is, does cacao and chocolate really cause zits or is this something that's... There's been a huge amount of research on that. Like, does chocolate cause allergies? And yeah. yes, some people are allergic to nuts, but most of those allergies, like the zits and all of that, yeah. that's caused by the sugar. That's what I figured. Right, and that we kind of know that, we suspect that. So I recommend raw, dark chocolate. Mm. And, and that's where you're gonna get those antioxidant compounds. Now we found out in the research over the last 10 years that chocolate is the number one antioxidant food in the world. No which, which would indicate that it'd probably be the number one longevity food in the world, which it appears that it is. It appears wow. that it is. Wow, so it's like you could go to the doctor and have all these things alien, and they go, well, I'm gonna write you up a prescription for- Heart trouble. Right. Heart right. trouble. There's, there's no question now, based on the research, that chocolate is the best single food for your heart. It's okay. better than coenzyme Q10, than cayenne pepper, than garlic. Any, any of these things that we take for our heart, chocolate is number one by a large factor. Now, I, I, I would say to any, any of our viewers, uh, yeah, go out and get yourself then some raw chocolate. But let's say that they can't find it. What, what's the percentage? You know, you always see the percentage. Yeah. What's the percentage that you should not go below or, or, or is there? Well, you want to get organic bars that are over 70%. Oh. That's kind of where you want to, want to land. Uh -huh. And... Um, 
it, quality does count. So you want to find a reputable brand yeah. that you really like. And, and the thing about chocolate is it's a reward. It's a treat. And how do you train a dog? How do you train a gerbil? How do you train a dolphin? Yeah. You, you've got to treat them and you treat them with food. So how do you train a human? Right, you have to have treats, and right. what's the treat going to be? So, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, so you train them, or also to say you're sorry. <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> here's exactly. A box of chocolate. Yeah, yep. here's a box of chocolates. Right. This whole uh, sort of things out. And on that subject, actually, chocolate's an aphrodisiac? Yeah, Did it's always been considered an aphrodisiac. It's always been known to be an aphrodisiac. And yeah, it gets the, it gets the love juices going, yeah. so to speak. So then would you, would you call chocolate a food or a drug? Ooh. Or, or, or is that kind of a... A, a silly way to put it because I guess all food is a drug in a way. It, it affects our body in a certain way, but right? I, how would you? Would you I, I call it a superfood. A superfood? Because yeah. it's a food, but it's got a few bangs for the buck. Yeah. <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, we won't go there. Um, okay, now your, your, your chocolate comes from Noni Land, which. Uh, right? right. I got into chocolate about. It's been about 10 or 11 years ago now when I really got had this whole raw chocolate revelation. Okay. And then I was in Amsterdam a few years after that, and I heard this guy say at this, this shop that I was in, he said to me, he said, one day I'm going to move out of here, I'm going to get a chocolate farm. And I thought, wait a second, you're going to get a chocolate farm? And that just, it just planted that seed. So I started a chocolate farm about six years ago, and it's called Noni Land, and we've grown chocolate from seed on that farm. You're growing um, vanilla uh, That's right. bean plants uh, with the cacao? That's right. Yes. So that... vanilla is an orchid. It's an okay. aerial plant. So basically vanilla can survive without even touching the ground. And it grows in other trees. So one day we got a huge amount of vanilla. And we had it brought to our farm. And I let it grow in the nursery for about a year. And then I thought, i got to put this out there. I mean, this is getting too big for the nursery. Oh. So I thought, where am I going to put it? And I thought, well, how about in the cacao trees, the chocolate trees? So I have now chocolate trees growing with vanilla. And they've been growing together for years now. Do you, do you use the vanilla in, when you make the chocolate? Is it, you know what I mean? Is it the vanilla part of the chocolate making process? Absolutely, yeah. And, and this is the thing they say about cacao is that whatever's growing around it and with it, it takes those flavors on. Well, I, I, when I saw yeah. that, I thought, wow, you could actually grow like strawberries with the chocolate right. stuff too. Yeah? Yes, and berries of all kinds, sure. That's yeah. fascinating. It's amazing. I mean, there's nothing more incredible than a chocolate farm. There's nothing yeah. more incredible than growing chocolate. But and now, incredible. are you, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, on your video that I, I watched, um, each tree, you've kind of made a little room for each tree. That's right. And like they have yeah. names and that, and that you can actually, when you eat a sacred chocolate, you can see the tree where it came from, that's right? That's right, yes. That's, that's fabulous. It's amazing, yeah. We, we have actually taken this idea of single estate origin and terroir to its appropriate end, uh -huh. which is this is the tree and here's chocolate bars made from this tree. There's the vanilla growing around it and has that vanilla in it. So it's 100% that tree. And then I'll tell you the story of that tree. Well, we use spirulina from the Big Island of Hawaii as manure to feed this, you know, and fertilize this tree. We've used rock dust from the Wailua River Valley that we brought down and threw it on that tree. We've um, built up the soil using composting and here's our compost pit and here's what's gone in, on, into it. And it, it, I tell the whole story about it. So each, each bar has its own story. Yeah, that just makes it like a, a, a ritual in itself to eat the chocolate. It's a, it's, it's like the it's circle sacred. of life. It's, it's sacred. sacred. Oh yeah, I mean, let, let's get to that now. <laughs> um, obviously, um, the, 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 heart, the chocolates come in the shape of a heart, right? We've already talked about how it's good for the heart. Uh, but your, your partner, um, uh, Steven uh, Adler. That's right. Um, sacred Steve. Um, he actually, uh, talk a little bit about, he, he does blessings and prayers over the, over the chocolate? He's actually a minister. Okay. He's actually a minister. And, and he, he and the team there um, pray over the chocolate. So they pray that it's going to have good benefits for people, that it's going to be healthy, that it's going to support health, that it's going to be fun, it's going to provide people with um, um, solace for their woes, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Right. Those prayers go into every batch. So there's no, no batch that comes out of that chocolate factory that hasn't been actually prayed over with good positive intentions. <laughs> That's... And, and the research indicates that chocolate does react to it. There's been really? double blind research, absolutely. There's double blind research that indicates that if somebody prays over one batch of chocolate and then they mix it with another batch of chocolate, so nobody knows which one's which, and then they feed it to a group of people, say 100 people, that those people who ate the prayed over chocolate or the blessed chocolate will respond better 
than those who ate just regular chocolate. Wow. Are Even you, if it's the same chocolate. You listen to Anheuser Busch, pray over all the Bud Light that way. No. Um, now, um, Steve, though, he's act like a rocket scientist. He too, is right? literally a rocket scientist. He's, yeah. he's a Stanford trained rocket scientist. One of his graduate projects was to design the booster system um, that, that, or the, the maneuverability system of the, of the um, space station. So that was, that was his focus when he was a graduate student, but he ended up getting into computers really deeply and then inevitably um, he ran into me and then I sent him a bag of cacao beans. Okay. Wait, I, I didn't get the connection from <laughs> computers to inevitably. Well, he, he's a food fanatic, oh, right? Okay. So he's into the same kind of food stuff as I am. And so he, inevitably we ran into each other and then over a period of years, we were really good friends, and then one day I sent him a bag of cacao beans, and I said, check this out. And, and he just had like a really shocking change of heart about what he was gonna do with his life. He's like, I wanna focus on this. This is amazing. I can't even believe what this raw chocolate is. Yeah. And it changed his life. Yeah. So, and um, he, is he the one who developed the process of turning it, I mean, using his scientific, right. yes. his mind, that, of actually turning the raw cacao bean into something that we would recognize as chocolate? That's correct. Yeah. Yep. And he's got that down better than anybody in the world. He, he's, he's actually cracked a very, very big secret. And it's a very, very tightly held secret yeah. in our operation, actually. Yeah, and I, I, You guys have to <laughs> check out the video on the, on the website. He's like... Willy Wonka, psychedelic Willy Wonka. He's like, well, love and oh, it's it's fabulous. It just it seems like um, he's got such a great energy. Just I mean, even without praying over, just him being in the presence. Of he his has a, he has a great energy, and and I have to tell you, I've never seen somebody work so hard. Mm -hmm. he, he has worked in that factory year after year after year for very little return. Because mm -hmm. to get a, a company that goes from bean to bar, does everything low temperature, stone on stone grinding, all of the original old time ways of doing things is in America, it's very, very expensive. And so it's a, it's a very high end product. And what, what are some of the, you know, you don't just, we're not just talking about like a, a chocolate bar. You, you actually, you have different kinds of the chocolate bars, right? Uh, like what's, what are some of your biggest sellers? Our, our milk is a big seller. It's M-Y-L-K, contains actually no milk in it. It's all coconut, actually. It's coconut and chocolate together. Oh. So it's really a great product and it's our, it's our best seller. Yeah. Um, we also have a really interesting herbal bar. Is that, that the one with the Brazilian? Yes. Well, I mean, from the, the Brazilian Amazon? herbs, yes. And the Amazonian herbs and that 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 was a project that Steve and I worked on together and it just was a hit it just it just hit and yeah. so it's been a big hit for about five years that Amazonian chocolate bar and then we have a really nice immuno mushroom bar which is all the medicinal mushrooms with chocolate which is the traditional way that they use chocolate in Central America they would take mushrooms from the forest that were medicinal had healing qualities and they would mix it with chocolate. Mm -hmm. And so we have that. We also have just regular chocolate bars like the Twilight Dark. That's, mm -hmm. that's kind of my favorite actually, mm -hmm. 69%. And then we have the uh, Midnight Dark, which is 83%. And then we have actually a 100% cacao bar. We, we've got quite a few different variants in there. Diabetic friendly too. Oh, really? Yep. Awesome. Do, do you get testimonials or can you, can you share any stories of people where uh, where, where perhaps chocolate has, when they started eating raw chocolate, has changed them or? or oh, I have so many stories of that. I have more you, stories of that. Was there a good that. one that you can well, think of? That? Well, yeah. I mean, I've had people, you know, come to me and tell me that um, it, it really got them out of being neurotic in their mind and got them into their heart and more feeling. Because that's what chocolate does. Chocolate makes you more of a feeling type of person, a more kinesthetic type of person, a person who goes on intuition more rather than constantly having to rotate everything up here in the noggin, you know, mm -hmm. which can get a little neurotic. So I've had a lot of people tell me that over the years. I've had people tell me that um, it was very, very powerful against their asthma. Chocolate is very powerful against asthma. It's the most powerful thing there is against asthma. I've had some pretty shocking testimonials in that regard. I've also had testimonials in regard to MS. Chocolate is right on the button for MS. No kidding. Multiple sclerosis, yeah. For some reason, whatever that particular condition is, chocolate hits that condition and alleviates the symptoms for a period of time. So it's, it's therapeutic for that condition. What about digestion at all? Well, chocolate is really great for digestion because it contains a huge amount of soluble and insoluble fiber. Mm. So it's really able to pull everything through. It's an incredible digestive aid. But when actually. you say soluble and insoluble, I mean, you're talking about like your, your kind of chocolate, not the Hershey bar, which is all pulverized and 
heated it, up, well, and it's, it, or it's is it be, still? It's massively heated. Now the thing is, it still does contain some real cacao. Uh. It may come from sweatshop labor kind of situations, <laughs> right. and you know, unbelievably. Right horrible situations that are going on out there. Um, but see, they've never been able to knock off the flavor of cacao because it's, it's too complex. It's the most complex flavor in the world. They've knocked off vanilla, they yeah, just use vanillin, yeah. and they got rid of vanilla, but you can't knock off chocolate. So even the junkiest chocolate in the world will actually contain something that's good. Mm. You, have you thought about making like chocolate sauces to put like on ice cream? Oh, absolutely. Like yeah. Molays. We do all kinds of molays. We even revived Tejate, which is a Oaxaca recipe down in Mexico. And mm -hmm. I've revived actually all the ancient recipes in my Naked Chocolate book. Awesome. And we do those things at various events, various dinners that we do. Mm -hmm. We just had a wonderful dinner in Baltimore where we serve people a beautiful chocolate um, course. It was, it was amazing. It, it's really a fun, incredibly eloquent and elegant food to work with. Mm -hmm. It's very exciting. Now, it is. we're going to wrap things up here, but at, as always at the end of our show, which is called What Matters Most, we like to ask our guests what matters most. And when I say that, I mean like, what is that lasting footprint, not your carbon footprint, obviously, but what is that lasting image that you want to leave uh, with, with, with this planet? Is, is there one? or? Are you well, with sacred chocolate, it's, it's, the, it's the sacredness and love that we have for chocolate and that chocolate represents in our world. Chocolate yeah. is, is really an important food in our world. It, it really comforts people's hearts. For me, it, my footprint is, is also related to that. Mm -hmm. It's about the love that I have for the planet and the love that I have for plants. And, and I, I'm hopefully inspiring other people to take on that, that love. You know, I'm a fanatic when it comes to gardening. I'm a fanatic when it comes to growing trees. Um, it's, it's like a deep passion. I'm out there at three in the morning. I mean, it's like that. Wow. Yeah, it's full on. Well, uh, <laughs> it, it is a grounding um, ex it experience when you're actually working with the earth and, and yeah. You're, it's you're so much fun. Energy. Yeah, you are. And it's like, it's like sacred. It's holy. It's a, it's a communion yeah. um, with, with a higher power, which is, you know, God, basically. That's, you know, that's what these things are these plants and our earth is like you know it's an emanation of god so it's a communion yeah actually you know i was thinking about raw food um it seems like our bodies were made uh, through evolution we were in intended to eat raw food right right yes, so we were made right. to eat raw food and and uh this cooking thing just it's out of control i mean w yeah. cooking serves a purpose it's like yeah. a food preservation technology or it can take something that's toxic and actually you know make it make useful it, right like like beans for example most beans are toxic raw but you cook them you can make them edible do, so it's survival do you do you are you a, a, a like a 100 percent yeah raw i'm food a basically 100 percent raw food guy really yeah absolutely yeah because it's we you know i don't need the other stuff and i have access to the most incredible raw foods in the world so yeah. You know, why not have it? But you spend so much time on the road. How do you g d negotiate that? Because, you know, I do too. And I can't always eat the way I like to on the road. Sometimes I just don't have a choice. Right. I mean, me too. But yeah. I, I do navigate it. Okay. So, for example, sometimes I can't get an organic mango when I'm in Mexico. Yeah. But at least I can get a mango. Right. You, go. you know, so I can get by in yeah. certain ways. I've been doing it for a long time. I've been doing this, uh, the raw foods, at, at a significant level in my life for about 23 years. Um, Totally raw foods for 18 years. Wow. So, so one of my favorite part of me. One of my favorite things to eat is steamed uh, broccoli and tofu over brown rice with hummus. But I guess that's like junk food to you because it's all cooked, right? Well, I mean, I'm a raw broccoli fanatic. I absolutely well, I like raw love broccoli raw broccoli. Yeah. You just reminded me of a dinner I had the other night where I was really? just dipping raw broccoli, the heads of raw broccoli, into like guacamole and all these so dill sauces that we uh -huh. made in the blender, and it was awesome, yeah. super amazing. Very yeah. Cool. Well, I've had such a blast talking to you today. Right on. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for being Thank here. Thank you. And uh, this is Eric Anselm just reminding all of you that it's the simple things in life that are what matters most.